Hello, hello, and a very enthusiastic welcome to this episode of Baiju SciTech Roundup, where we bring you what's new in the fields of science and technology, and also the science behind the latest news of the world. So let's get started. Now, our first piece of news is about global warming causing extreme rainfall. Many Indian cities have been dealing with heavy rains recently. These rains have even caused flood-like situations and disrupted day-to-day -day life in multiple cities. You might have heard people say that it's because of global warming that it's raining more. But how exactly does the earth getting heated up affect the amount of rain? Well, to answer this, we first need to understand the science behind rainfall. Now, you know the basics of the water cycle. Water from different water bodies evaporates and turns into water vapor. This water vapor enters the atmosphere and rises along with hot air. And eventually, as the air cools down, the water vapor in it condenses to small water droplets forming clouds. When these clouds are saturated and the water droplets become too heavy, they fall as rain or other forms of precipitation like snow, hail and so on. Now, let's dig a little deeper and see what happens at the molecular level. You know that air and water are made of molecules that are moving and on heating, these molecules get energy and they start moving faster. This is what also happens during evaporation of water from the water bodies. Water molecules are bound to each other with intermolecular forces, thus staying together as a liquid. Now, when the surroundings are hot, they take up this heat and start moving faster. As they move faster, they push each other away and are thus able to overcome the intermolecular forces of attraction. This allows them to come out of the liquid water and go into the air. These molecules are now so far apart that they behave like a gas, which we call water vapor. As more and more evaporation occurs, more water molecules enter the air as water vapor. Next, this water vapor carrying air rises up in the atmosphere and cools down. This means that the energy of its molecules reduces and they start moving slower. This allows the intermolecular force of attraction to bring the water molecules closer together. Some of them actually come close enough to actually condense to form water droplets. When the air gets colder, more and more water vapor condenses and we get clouds which eventually causes rain. Now, how does global warming affect this process? Did you notice that as the hot air rises and becomes cold, the amount of water vapor it contains reduces. This is because some of the water vapor condensed to form liquid water. Now, this essentially means that hot air is able to hold more water vapor than cold air. This enhanced ability of hot air to carry more water vapor is the basis of extreme rainfall in the recent years. Are you wondering how? Well, in recent times, global warming has led to an increase in the Earth's global temperature and this has made the air hotter than before. And this hotter air can hold more water vapor than it did a few decades ago. Now, when this hot air rises and gets cold, the greater amount of water vapor it is holding condenses back into liquid water, giving us larger, heavier clouds and heavier rains than before. Scientists believe that as the Earth gets warmer, the rains will become more and more extreme. 
they are also researching other ways in which this global warming is affecting the weather and causing extreme and erratic rains. These extreme rains cause flooding, landslides, damage crops and buildings and even cause deaths. This makes global warming and climate change an even more pressing issue than it was believed to be a few decades ago. Do you think humans will be able to control this in time? Comment your thoughts below. Let's move on to our second piece of news about the recent debate on airbags. Following business tycoon Cyrus Mistry's death in a car accident, airbags made the news headlines for some time. Interestingly, the Indian Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways had asked car manufacturers to provide six airbags in every car produced after October 1st, 2023. Four in the front and two in the rear. Currently, two airbags are mandatory. One for the driver and one for the passenger. The additional airbags have been introduced to improve the safety of passengers in the front as well as the back seats of the car. However, a global organization, the International Road Federation or the IRF, has shown some reservations regarding this decision. They have requested the ministry to conduct a survey on how many people wear seat belts in the back seat of a car. As per them, 96% of the people in India do not wear seat belts on the back seat, and this can make airbags counterproductive and cause even more injuries. But wait, how does not wearing a seat belt make an airbag dangerous? Well, to answer that, let's first understand what exactly a seat belt and an airbag do. When a car suddenly stops, the passengers fall forward. Can you tell me what causes that? Yes, it is inertia, the tendency of an object to continue in their state of rest or of motion. Now, since the passenger's body was moving with the car, it has a tendency to continue moving forward even when the car stops. Hence, the falling forward. Now, during an accident, when the car suddenly stops, inertia may cause the passengers to hit the steering wheel or the dashboard or they might even fall out of the car. And this is where the seatbelt comes in. Its job is to slow the passengers down and protect them from harm. But the head can still hit the dashboard and cause injury. And this is where the airbags come in. They act like a cushion to reduce the impact. With an airbag, the momentum of the passenger goes to zero slowly. And as per the second law of motion, this reduces the force of impact. For more on airbags, you can watch this video on how airbags make a car safer. Now, let's see how airbags and seat belts are related. Airbags inflate almost instantly in around 20 to 30 milliseconds. The speed of inflation is extremely high, around 320 kilometers per hour. A seat belt slows down the passenger and they fall forward by the time the airbag has finished inflating. So, this timing is very important. Let us see what will happen if the passengers are not wearing a seat belt. They will naturally fall forward much quicker and hit the airbag while it is inflating. Just imagine getting punched by a huge fist that's coming at you with a very high speed. That's how the airbag would feel. And this is why a seat belt is absolutely necessary. However, while Indian law mandates seat belts in the front seats, Seat belts in the rear seat have not been mandatory so far. But Cyrus Mystery's death has sparked a discussion on seat belts and airbags again. Our Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari has said that rear seat belts will soon be enforced in India. 
Do you wear a seat belt in the rear seat of a car? Let us know in the comment section below. We will be back next week for yet another exciting episode of Baiju Sidek Roundup. Until then, keep sciencing and do not forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. See you.